Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County for Wednesday, November 29th, 2017. I am the Nighthawk, and our studio director, as always, the ever so lovely Miss Joanne, and on the panel, the regulars. We weren't here last week, but we are back tonight. On my immediate right, the Duke, Nighthawk. and on my far right will be... David Handy. En route as we speak. And he's probably about ready to walk in the studio right now. And remember, folks, you can watch the show on Facebook. All you have to do is, and you're talking or listening to the world's worst technological person, but from what I understand, no. just type in Northwest no. Public Access, and that will get you right to where you need to go. So... Okay, Northwest Public Access TV. I don't think she, 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 she just said Northwest Access TV. Oh, okay. Not public. So, so an announcement, and I have not had a chance to talk to Dave or Duke yet, but this will be our last week on the show. Uh, we've all gotten our walking papers. Starting next week, the host of the show will be Charlie Rose, and the two panelists will be Matt Lauer, and Garrison Keeler. <laughs> I, just okay. heard, I just heard about Garrison late today, so, so Garrison's uh, gone down Garrison too. Garrison Keeler's yeah. gone down so too. I, mean, our, who, who, I guess the our, question is who's not, who's not going to go down? Hang on, Duke. We have a call. Good evening. <laughs> you are the first caller tonight on our final show. Go ahead. You said your final show? Well, yeah. For our three guys. I, didn't you listen? Who, who, I, I did not. Oh, Charlie Rose is taking over as host. It, along with a panelist of Matt Lauer and Garrison Keeler. Oh, no. The most, actually, the most surprised guy in New York this week was not Matt Lauer. He knew this was coming. It was Eli Manning. He didn't know it was coming. Right. Poor Eli's Eli. the that most surprised big story. man in New York City. Uh, uh, trust me, NBC people uh, knew this was coming. Uh, they've been writing about this for, or st I guess investigating him for a couple of months. and he, He's apparently a a serial uh, romancer, big-time womanizer, has been for years. I mean, uh, a, a lot of it consensual and a lot of it otherwise. And, uh, but even hmm. consensual with co-workers uh, kind of puts uh, your underlings in a bad situation. But, uh, for his co-host, I saw Savannah Guthrie, is that her name? It seems yeah. like pretty stunning. She's a lawyer. She sure seemed pretty stunned, stunned yeah, this morning. Yeah, well, I think, they, I think you know, so. but uh, they've been read, the, uh, the report yeah, is, and they, they even, I, I think, mentioned it later in the morning that, I mean, he's, uh, you know, he's been, he's been under investigation for two months by the, the different newspapers and whatever. How did, how did uh, we not, how did we not hear about, how did we not hear about him before today? Oh, because, you know, uh, you know, the, it's like, uh, when you're in the high circle, you know, they're not quite politicians where you can use taxpayers' money to <laughs> buy yourself out of these situations. I think that's going to end. I think Conyers is going to resign. That's my prediction. I don't think Conyers, he, he won't last survive. a week. I think yeah. he'll resign. He might not make it. Uh, I mean, uh, you, you can't be using taxpayers' money to shut people up uh, for sexual improprieties. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I don't even think the best liberals can put up with that. And, um, you know, I have a theory on these these people. You know, I'd love to go back and study their history when they were in high school and college. I think, you know, the, 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 you know, I bet you they were womanizers in college, probably high school, too. And then it never leaves them. It's kind of like a disease, you know. And we, in our own personal lives, we probably know a lot of people, you know, and we went to high school with, and you look at them and, um, you know, well, whatever. That's just uh, off the cuff. But New York Giants, I couldn't be happier. It's about time. You're judged on what you do. Uh, or I should say you're not judged on what you've done. You're judged on what you do. But Eli, uh, Eli hasn't had a, he, he hasn't Eli, had a no, bad season, has he? Eli's fault. But you can't go forward any longer with Eli and rebuild the New York football giants. I mean, they're going to be in a position to draft a new quarterback. It's a great quarterback class in the draft. And how long, how long is the new quarterback going to take? The new quarterback's not going to lead them to glory next year. No, 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 but you've got to start somewhere. Oh, we've bent the glory, Richard. We've bent the glory. Yeah. So, well, you know, that's and, that's. And all Leonard, if been there, done that. If you're benching Eli, why do, you even, why do you bother with Geno Smith? Why don't you throw in the 
the third well, number three the guy. Kid. See well, what he can do. Well, going to be in in a couple weeks. Yeah, but, but well, why don't you see what the other Duke, guy can do? Duke, you're absolutely right. This is the... What a slap. Poor Eli. The, right, the slap here is if McAdoo, who management today said, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Th- he could be back? fired before the oh. season ends. He could really? be fired okay. tomorrow. Now, if, he, oh. if McAdoo said... We want to see our third-round pick, Davis Webb, go. There's five weeks. Let's give him a real trial. That would make, that would make some sense. I would say I can deal with that. No. We know who Geno Smith is. We've seen Geno Smith. There was a reason why he was let go by the New York Jets. No. There is no reason to see what he can do. At best, he's a backup quarterback. But Leonard Perry... Well, a backup quarterback, you know, I hope we don't win any more games. But, but he is a backup yeah. quarterback. All, all the more reason not to play Geno. With probably. that offensive line, you know, if you yell fire in a hotel, I, want, I don't want somebody in a wheelchair. Leonard, I want somebody who can move around. Leonard, last, last, he can do that. Last week's game on Thanksgiving night, the right guard of the Giants was John Halapio and the Right cool. tackle okay. was Chad Wheeler. Which, oh, yeah, I agree. I, mean, I agree totally. And Eli I agree. was... His time is not, Eli, Eli, Eli's time is come and gone. But, Leonard, with, I'm with telling you right guy. now, sorry. if he's not on the yeah. Giants next year, he's going to be starting a team... Who's, who's the, well, he's not going to be on the Giants next year. Right. Wouldn't you think half the teams in the NFL would seriously the consider obvious. playing No, him? not half. I told you. Not half? Pa- so really? Do that many decent the quarterbacks NFL have players there? Six weeks ago, he was ranked the most overrated quarterback in the NFL. All right, Leonard, Le- Leonard, let me tell you this. Bryce Harper this past year was voted the most overrated player in baseball. Doesn't mean anything. Now, Bry- uh, Bryce Harper, Eli right. Manning. Ricky, Ricky Fowler got, I think, that in golf. He can't even throw a touch pass in the, in the flat. Top 10 in it's the either going to be a hard row or it's going to be at yeah. somebody's feet. Yeah. He has no touch in the flat. Yeah. Never has. Right. I, I will say this. I mean, the Patriots. Eli Manning has as much mobility as a statue. We all know that. And with this horrible offensive right. line, right. It, it's Get made it a, out of there. Very let somebody run around and let, don't get him hurt. Right, right. You might be doing him a favor, saving his career. Look at it that way. I, th- no, you know, I think they he, might be saving this guy's career, giving him an extra three, four years with somebody. Yeah. Let him go with somebody that can protect him. Well, I can tell you right now, two teams are obvious choice. Number one is Jacksonville. Tom Coughlin runs the show down there. They have a very good defense. Uh, Blake Bortles is their quarterback. He's, he, Very, I, he's replaceable. They've got the stud running running back, Leonard Fournette, rookie out of LSU. Uh, uh, good receivers. And the second choice would be his brother's old stomping ground at the end of his career, the Denver Broncos. Still a good team. They started the season with seventh-round draft pick Trevor Simeon. Now they've got Brock Osweiler back in. They're, they're in complete need of a QB. But uh, Eli is still a top third if there's what? Oh, thir- God, no. I totally disagree with you. Nope. I, oh, just like, but, you know, that's, we can agree to disagree on that. But right. I couldn't be more, I couldn't not be more in disagreement with you when you say that. That's just, that's just right. not so. Okay. One thing we're in agreement is Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. He's got a chance to... Again, to be the MVP, if it's not going to be him, it's going to be Carson Wentz. But I would love to put Tom Brady behind the New York Giants line for the season and see what type of magic he, he could make. It, it <laughs> you is, know, I don't know who he's throwing the ball to. But, but Leonard, that's the other thing. We, we talk every week about our offensive line. All our receivers are injured. Okay, we, I don't even know if our receivers, uh, uh, guys like Tavares King, Roger Lewis Jr., uh, I don't know if they can catch or not because they can't get open. These but again, right. But, but again, in all fairness, the Giants got to find out about people they know nothing about. Here. I don't and, disagree. And, 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 trust me. Trust me. The, 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 kid, the kid you're talking about there, the, what's his name? Uh, you know, the, our draft pick in the third round. Davis last year, Webb. The quarterback. I mean, he's not ready right now. He needs a couple. He'll, I bet you they activate him this week. Glenn, we're, and I we're, bet you he's on the sideline. We're, and I bet you he, in a couple of weeks he's going to see a lot of playing time. He probably will, but we're 11 weeks into it. And I'm just going to get back at you what you just said. We need to see people that we don't know about. Again, we know who Gino is. Yeah, but the kid's not ready. 
after 11 weeks, uh -huh. uh, it was at this point last week, Jared Goff of the uh, L.A. Rams was brought in. Didn't fare well the last five games of the season, but he got enough exposure and experience to put him in a uh, position where he can succeed. And, of course, the Rams have been the surprise team of the NFL this well, year. I think Giants have done Eli a big favor. They've ex they're going to extend his career. And uh, he, he, I know he's uh, kind of upset now, but uh, he'll get over it. And uh, he's probably got three, four years left, not with the Giants. And if he plays on a pretty good team, he'll, he'll finish his career in a manner that will land him in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. No, let and me wish just... him all the best. But there's no future with the Giants. The only future for him probably is getting hurt. Yeah. He hasn't thrown off his front foot more than 10% of the time yeah. all year. No, I... Hard to... Hard to complete passes when you can't even throw off your front foot if you don't have time or you're scared to get hit. He's completed, for the record, 62.5% yeah. of his yeah, passes. Yeah, most of them are like uh, 15, 20 yarders. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we, we've, we haven't scored 30 points in what? In, in, in a, 30 over games. a year and a half. Yeah. We have not scored 30 right. points in a football game under McAdoo. Hey, Leonard. That's quite a stat. Leonard, what team leads the NFL in drops this year? Oh, I really don't. I, you know, I don't know. That would it be like an yes. obvious question. That would be our New York answer. football giants. And every week on the show, as bad as the season's been, I have been praising up and down Evan Ingram, who I said in two years. Well, he of, had a bad day there. The last two weeks, I think he's An got awful. eight drops now for the season. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so Odell had a. Odell's had a lot of drops in key situations, too. But we would, and he, he's supposed to be the best in the business. That's a joke. Yeah. We would, well, I would put him a second or third on. Oh, my God. Well. you got to be. Who do you. Uh, I, oh, no, 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 no. Who do you, I'd take here. the kid from yeah, Atlanta. Just, I'd take the kid from Pittsburgh. Right, just to get right. a couple. And those are the two. The top. I'd to take the kid from Kansas City. All, all over the Odell. No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're telling me you would take Tariq Hill? Over Odell Beckham. Oh God, yeah. He's now the two, head. his head's better. The two his guys you previously up, mentioned, right. Antonio Brown, is clearly the best receiver in football. In number two, you mentioned Atlanta. Yes, I love Julio Jones, so I would gladly put Odell Beckham, but <laughs> at number three, uh, put him on a boat with a bunch of marijuana well, and coke smokers. Yeah. man, that's where you can put Odell. I'm it, not a fan of Odell. I'm yeah. sorry. It's all gone downhill since the boat in Miami. Yeah, yeah. That's when it all started to go yeah. south for the Giants, yeah. when he went took his guys down to the boat. Yeah. But anyway, I won't hold you on that, and uh, you guys got to, you can discuss this ad infinitum, but uh, the only other thing I want to, point I want to make is uh, is uh, guess, well, I, I hate to put this in a manner so you'll get it so easily, but you will anyway. So uh, somebody reached a milestone here just recently in golf. There's no player that has ever been in the top 50 for 24 consecutive years until most recently. And now there's one. Huh. Jim Furyk. Mickelson. 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 Okay. Not 1993 idea, broke in and he was runner up in some no name tournament and he was ranked number 47. And he's been in the top 50 for 24 straight years. Oh. And, uh, you know, he's what? He's 47 years old. He's won 42 uh, PGA titles, five majors, one uh, U.S. Open away from the Grand Slam, and uh, was a, quite a contributor during the President's Cup. He was a captain's pick. He finished third earlier this month in the Safeway Open. So at 47, Phil's not done yet. Leonard, Not speaking of yet. golf, are you gonna are you gonna watch? Are you, are you uh, excited about Tiger's return to golf tomorrow? <laughs> Not really. Either am I. Not really too excited about. I guess Tiger's golf return. Team, when golf when is he returning? Oh, they've been. I've heard him say he's feeling good and he's healthy. So when does he return? Is tomorrow. It tomorrow. It's a, it's his tourney. Eighteen player tourney in at Nassau. Yeah, the Heroes World Challenge. It benefits, it benefits his charity. That? Is Mickelson in that Duke? No, I, no, no. I don't no, think so. Because they're good friends. No, they're not. David, how do you <laughs> yeah, qualify to be in that tournament? Friend. You get invited to that tournament. Right. You get invited. But we're talking I mean, a bunch of good players. <laughs> yeah. yeah. DJ's anyway. here, well, Brooks gentlemen, Kepka. Uh, have, a, have a good show. But you said look for next week who uh, Charlie Rose, Matt Lauer, and Bill O'Reilly. No, Gar Garrison Keeler. Garrison Keeler got axed today, too.
Keeler says he didn't do much, though, but at his age, he doesn't want to fight it. He, he's he's 70, 75. 75, remember, just like Charlie. I, we used to go to Burlington, my wife and I, to eat almost every Saturday night oh, a number of years ago. And, boy, he was must li- he was a must-listen. That, that was an entertaining show. I mean, I, I must Never admit, I it. totally enjoyed no. Lake Wobegon and his sense of humor. Uh, that that was great radio. That really was. And, um uh, you know, but they're all fallen by the wayside, and uh, so okay. and it, it is, it's a sea change here going on, and uh, it's empowering women uh, as they should well be. But when you say they that, well be it's a, just evolution. I consider this nothing but evolution. Right, it was bound to happen. Right, but Leonard, don't a, a point that every everybody makes. If you think the uh, female worker, the uh, the store clerk at Walmart, is feeling empowered by by all this well, and stuff, not I every, suspect it doesn't happen overnight. Right. We're talking, we're talking top tier people here. Get yeah, down below that, and probably it, life it doesn't might change down at all. A little bit. I, d- uh, I, I hope, don't I think hope the manager so, but I'm skeptical. Probably will be making sexual advances uh, toward a low level employee. Uh, not that they do, but I'm just saying it's probably less apt to happen now. Yeah, they might think they might think twice for a couple seconds before they do it. Oh, I'm not, I'm not as cynical as you about that. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think we are in the midst of a real sea change here. Hey. And, it's the, it, and it's nice to see the mighty fall, because it does tend to scare the lesser lights uh, when the mighty fall. And I tell you what, you know, hey, <laughs> they're falling left and right. It's like dominoes. And uh, anyway, have a good show, Thanks, guys. Leonard. And, uh, you know, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. We did. Thank you. Good. And, and Hawk, your uh, physique looks like you're just about primed for another cruise. I'm leaving tomorrow morning at I know, because you're six. looking so svelte. Yep. I mean, you, you really, he, uh, he's, uh, you're just looking lean and mean again. Well, thank you. I'm thinking about coming out of retirement. So. <laughs> I understand. Well, have a good okay. cruise. Thank you. We'll see you later. Thanks, Bye. Leonard. See you later. 527-6449. David, a couple of things. Number one, your shirt looks great on the monitor. I like, I like that. that. Is a good shirt. That, like that looks shirt. really good on good, looking shirt. good Vermont looking shirt. Number two, I'm guessing with that giant cap, it's not a coincidence you're wearing it tonight. No. Now I went into my drawer and pulled out my Eli shirt, my new New York. So, question is, he, is Eli out of New? Is, it, is he gone from New York or not necessary? I think the Brain Trust will have to talk about it. Okay, let's talk about our... Have you got any hope? I mean, you thought they were going to have a good year. Well... Have you got any hope that they can swing back and, and be a respectable team next year? Well, look at the Rams last year. Would they go 5-11? and 11 So the answer is yes, yes, son. And Jared Goff, who, as I mentioned, played five games and has had a good, good year. But look at the Giants' defense. Okay, I last thing I did before I came out defense here... Defense hasn't been I, bad, I, has I, I pulled, yeah, I, I pulled the injured reserve of the Giants... They put the Jackrabbit, Janoris Jenkins. Did he make it 20? What's that? Is he number 20 on the He's 18 on the list. Okay. Five of them are linebackers, okay? Uh, We're just playing backups of backups right now. And that's okay. It's just one of those years, you know, Murphy's Law has taken place. Now, can they come back to 11 and 5 next year? Probably not. Maybe ten to six. If if they can stay healthy, and of course everybody has injuries, but there is always a point of no return. The Giants still have a very good personnel on the defense. They draft a, a lineman, pick a lineman up in free agency. They can rebuild. They're still capable. And you, as much as we don't like Beckham personally, he is at least the third best receiver in football. Well, Sterling yeah. Shepard, who's missed a lot of time, is a very good flanker. I think Beckham's got to go. Oh, it's, it's, well, he will play. I can guarantee you he'll be there for his final year. Well, I would do. Dave, he's only he's at 6.5 next year. They're not going to let him go at that. Uh, he's, I think since and he's anyway, come they on could trade him and get some decent bodies. Is he? Uh, I have the problem, too, is the Giants Well, who knows what, what, if he's going to be all help. better, too. Um, yeah. But he could, be, he could be much worse. Yeah. I mean, that ankle. Hey, I broke my ankle playing hockey. When I was a freshman, and it took me about two or three years yeah, before I could yeah, run without a limp. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. And um, I didn't break it as bad as he did. Yeah. Uh, you know, one thing I want to say about Eli, uh, McAdoo did offer him, go ahead and start. At some point, I'm going to be taking you out. And Eli said, listen, 
If I've I'm got, not in to win the game, right. I'm out. That's exactly what you said. He said, I've got 210 consecutive starts, second all time. I'm not here because of that. I'm here to win. If I'm going to start, I'm going to finish the game. I'm out there to win. Did you listen to uh, John Mara's uh, press conference today? I read. Re, he, I listened he, to it. He wasn't, yeah, really. he wasn't at the stadium yesterday. What, uh, what Mara was saying is what they, they had talked about it. They had talked about this business. And, of course, McAdoo's got about as much personality as that cup of water. Well, can I stop right. you right now, David? Um, I'm going to be looking at the camera. I know you haven't seen this for a long time, but guess what's going to happen right now? A night hot guarantee. Uh, Here we go. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the new New York football Giants head coach 2018 will be Josh McDaniels. Oh, really? That's probably not too wild, I guess. Offensive coordinator of the New England Patriots at an early age, he bombed out with the Denver Broncos, but the, the guy is smart. And I'm, I'm going to give you a, a hint for the new GM. Remember Scott Pioli? Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. Patriot connection right there. And I'm going to throw Part, something Parcel's out. Parcell's son-in-law, right? right? Scott Pioli? Yeah, you're right. But there are some quarterbacks available. For Let's not talk Eli for one minute. Jimmy Grappolo is not signed Fine for next head, year. He's finally getting a start. They're right. finally going to let him start he, Sunday. Uh, he might want to go play for McDaniels and uh, Pioli. Uh, not that I it's want a, him, but Case Keenum's had a good year a with the Vikings. He's available. Sam Bradford from the Vikings who got hurt is available. And the, the biggest prize, and I'm almost sure, David, he doesn't want to go back, is Kirk Cousins of the yep. Redskins. He will be available. So if you want to save your first-round pick for an offensive lineman or well, trade down. what? But anyways, McDaniels is my... Guarantee, lock. Beggar. What about the yeah. the guy who's the general manager for the Carolina Panthers, who you was speak. Ernie Acorsi's... Oh, boy. Is it David Gettleman? Something like that? We need him to be back yeah. in the uh, general manager. Reese is a failure. Yep. Anybody that thinks that Flowers was ever going to be any good, and that that line was Pro Bowl quality, is an idiot. But, David, let me ask you a question. Eric Flowers' left tackle for the Giants was the ninth overall pick out of Miami. That's a very, very, very high pick. We just do Franklin County's highest-rated sports show. We're not pro scouts. They get paid to look at these guys, scout them down, analyze them, and say... That's who we're picking. Wasn't there How some guy? They... Actually, let me give Flowers credit. He has played much better. Until the, till the second week, half last week. Last week, right. Everybody played poorly. Yeah. But he has shown signs. He's, what the Giants uh, have done is Reese has made a lot of bad picks. Yep. And so they are bad. I've got a couple little interesting fun facts for you. Well, let me be the judge of that if they're Since fun. Eli Manning started his first game 210 games ago, there have only been 188 other quarterbacks start. Really? Out of those 188 quarterbacks that have started, only seven have won a Super Bowl. Wow. Really? Uh, Tom Brady, uh, ben. Drew Brees, uh, Ben. Aaron Rodgers. Right. Uh, Aaron Rodgers. There's not very many. Yeah. And the uh, uh, a couple other uh, things that I got from that press conference, what Mara was kind of hoping, and he was it's almost a little naivety, is he was kind of hoping that Eli would start the game, the team would play so well that they would leave Eli in the game and try to win it. And then only take Eli out on games that were lost causes. Mm -hmm. And Eli, to his credit, I think what the Giants should have done, if they'd have had a general manager that had half a brain. Or balls. They should have traded Eli during the trade deadline. I'm sure they could have got something decent for him. 
They could, but David, here, and I've had this conversation with a number of folks, it's not like you're Justin Verlander. A, a, a curveball's a right. curveball. You've a quarterback, you have a playbook that thick. Almost every team has a different system. Yeah. It's just near impossible. But aren't there some teams, take the Texans, take Denver, take Jacksonville, take yes. a couple of uh, – All I agree with it. All three teams. teams out there that were playoff caliber yes, teams. absolutely. That – by either by injury or by just bad luck, they've got a quarterback who stinks. I read another thing today that Eli was about the 20th rated quarterback out of 30. Hmm. Uh, I think he's actually I, better than that. Right, he's, right. If you're going by QBR, his quarterback rating, I agree. It's not good because the team we, stinks. And, and Leonard and I completely disagree about Eli, and I don't want to tell Leonard, but he, he sent me an email today, headline, it's about time. Open it up, it's about Eli. Uh-huh. So I disagree with Leonard. But one thing I will agree with Leonard, Eli is thrown off his front foot 10% of the time. He's been throwing off his heels the whole season. I have seen every single down Eli plays, and I, I mm-hmm. mourn every Sunday when I watch. They, uh, watch. They've been awful. I, I was forced to watch the Thanksgiving game. That was a just uh, – That was really – that ruined my – David, my, my, if you weren't a skin or giant fan, just a casual football fan. Oh, it wasn't a ter- terrible game. It was also. a terrible game, Duke. And if that was your first football game ever watching, you would never watch it. The only game, game that even had a hint of competitiveness was Detroit and uh, Vikes, Minnesota. And that game at least had a little bit. The, the uh, other what game. What about that? What about the Cowboys? The Cowboys stink. Yeah, what's happened the to product, those guys? The NFL's product. Yeah. Right. And you're talking, and, right, and the AFC especially gets just totally oh, beat up with the oh, it's Patriots and Steelers, That's the it. only That's it. two halfway decent now, teams. Now, I did watch, I did watch Alabama. I'm in the uh, Auburn. Auburn. What did they play? What trophy? It was the Iron Bowl. It was the Iron Bowl. The Iron Bowl. That it was, was a pretty key good game. game. Alabama Alabama's undefeated out. number one is out, out of the top. Well, four. they aren't done yet. Things, because things can change. Right. Clemson. If Georgia beats if Georgia beats Auburn Auburn Auburn's out. That'd be the and Auburn will be out. If Ohio State beats Wisconsin and Clemson's playing Miami, that's yeah. the game. Miami right. certainly right. could win if Miami wins that game. Clemson's out, so things could change. But right now, Alabama's. Out. Yeah, my, my heart bleeds for Nick Saban. Yeah. Can I, I tell you something, too? They said the, uh, what do they call it, power schedule, uh, the strength of schedule. They said Alabama was like 61st or 61st. Oh, one of their late the games country. was against Mercer. They played Mercer, what, two two weeks, the yeah. game before Auburn. It's, who? Mercer. Well, I don't even know where Mercer I think, is. I think it's Mercer. It's funny. Where? Mercer's beat the Dukies postseason basketball a few years ago. Where is Mercer? Uh, Mac- Macon, Georgia. I think it's a, there's another Mercer, but I think in Macon. Okay. And, right. Especially because you're Nick playing. Nick Saban does there. have powder puff schedules. Well, you yeah, can't, some, you can't say that Auburn's played powder puff. Oh. They beat number one two weeks out of three. Yep. No, Auburn, oh, no, Auburn. I'm into the college football stuff. Is pretty, can I, t- uh, pretty I cool. think college football this year has got more eyes on it because of Guys like myself that are watching the NFL, but the Iron Bowl—that's big. Yeah, talk yeah. about talk about big time. Yeah. College. That's the I guess you'd say Duke UNC is the, the basketball equivalent, but Alabama Auburn—that's yeah. that's a Dave. I just want to rivalry. pick up on your fun facts. Since Eli started November of 2003, taking over for Kurt Warner, uh, the Cleveland Browns have had 24 starting I know. quarterbacks. They, isn't that a... And of course, Cleveland's on its way to no one 16 season on the heels, what, 1-15 and last year? The uh, other teams in the NFC East have all had at least 10 different starting quarterbacks. In all the time okay, yeah. that, that right? Eli's been But, you there. know, yeah. and again, we can sit here and panic about the Giants. <clears throat> the Cowboys, what, they went 12-4 and four last year? They're five and six this right, Jack, year. Jack they're terrible. Earth, you know, and yeah. again, the aforementioned the Rams had a bad year. They're they're playing great. It, it's very easy to flip flop, and I still think the biggest reason is neutralize how many injuries. So again, back know. to Eli. Likely or not that he, that he's back with the Giants next year. Oh boy, so tough, tough nail one? me like that. I will. What do you think? That's give me hard, a second. Hard to say. I'd say it's it depends on the new coach. I give him thirty percent. You know what, David? Oh, that, that's all, I'm huh? going to say without even saying, you made a good point. A good coach with a Hall of Fame quarterback, you know, Eli, uh, don't listen to Leonard. He's still got three good years. Uh, Josh McDaniel comes in. 
He's been hanging around Tom Brady for half his life, okay? Why does he want to play with a Davis Webb or a Josh Rosen or a Sam Darnold? No, Leonard's long gone. Yeah, they, long uh, gone. That's if a, the, the right. Giants are going to have a, a, a top pick, they ought to get a really good lineman. See, and that's my point is you keep Eli. Right now we have the third overall pick. Experts say by the time the season's done, we'll probably have the fourth pick. Indianapolis probably will move up a notch. I can't but, see the Giants winning any right. games. So. But regardless, third or fourth, you're going to have a choice of either Sam Darnold from USC or Josh Rosen from UCLA. Again, for this argument, we like Eli. We're going to keep Eli. You go down, down to 10 or 12 position. You're, you're going to get the two top offensive linemen. They're both out of Notre Dame, a guard and a tackle. Mm-hmm. We'll take one of them you got a and a first-round pick next year. Huh. Good evening. You're on the best damn sports show in Franklin County. Hello. You boys have got bigger problems than Eli, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, oh absolutely. Right. <laughs> now, here's Big Mouth uh, Fitzy here. No, take it. Oh, Fitzy. Yeah. You're, what are you? Eight and two right now? Nine and two? Nine and two. Man. Nine nice and two. Year, Fitz. Right. Good job. So now that he's in first place, he's going to trash us. Go ahead. No, I'm not going to trash you. You guys, aren't, you don't have a football team. Never mind Eli or your coach. <laughs> you haven't got any talent. Well, the You're co- right. The, the coach terrible. might fall into that category. You know what, so. Fitzy? I think Coughlin, the year they fired him, was one of his best coaching jobs. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Because the Giants had nothing. Yeah. And then the team they had last year, they had, yeah. they yeah. were pretty good. But again, they do have talent. They have 18 of them on the injured reserve. So I every team has that many. Not not that many. No. Not, and and ooh, what, what, how about last year and the year before that? Don't have the talent, Nighthawk. No, you're right. You're right, Fitzy. They. They've had one good year out of about the last five. I disagree right. with my elder statesman here. Uh, the defense last year was one of the <laughs> very – Elder statesman, poor Duke. I'm, I'm okay. talking about you, Fitzy, not the oh. Duke. <laughs> Listen, uh, I'm calling about an entirely different subject. All right, go ahead. sports-related. Can you imagine that? Yeah, go ahead. I'm talking about the Republic of Burlington. Yeah. Uh, the state's attorney down there today in her keen wisdom – Sarah George. decided that they, uh, Burlington and Chittenden County ought to have a safe injection house. <laughs> She's promoting people coming in a safe place to take drugs, and across the street they're going to have a clinic that helps people who are on drugs. So in both cases, the taxpayers of this state pay for it. Yep. Isn't that smart? How dumb can we be? Fitzy, the expression bad behavior gets rewarded, and that's just the way it is. No good deed goes unpunished. You know what we can do is when they legalize marijuana, they can July first. Yeah. They can take the marijuana money and pay for the heroin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not going to have any money from marijuana because every state's going to have it legalized, and they're not going to be any business. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you get New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and all those guys in the same game, where are you going to make the money? Hey, they've done everything. I was reading the other day where uh, the state is short on revenue. And yeah, you, know, you know what none of these guys ever talk about is what Vermont's <laughs> done over the last 10 or 15 years is chase away all of their highest income guys and had them move to non-income tax states like Florida. Yep. And, and it's not just the income tax. Vermont also has a surcharge on the estate tax. Yes, they do. So if you're a guy, if you're a high net worth guy, you're 50 million, 100 million, 200 million or more, where are you going to go? But those are the guys, the top 1%, everybody talks about the top 1%. The top 1% pays about 70 or 80% of all the taxes. Right, the top 2% of this country pays 70% of income taxes. You know, I talk about, I laugh at at Pelosi and those guys who say, well, if we have a tax reduction, the deficit will grow. Exactly. The spending. Have you boys ever heard of that? Right, but the thing, too, the irony of that is during Obama's administration, those eight years, he doubled debt. So now well, all they, of a sudden yeah, it's an issue they, with the Democrats. Today, Schumer and those guys are saying, we can't cut this. We can't yeah. cut our taxes because the deficit will grow. Wow, cut it's like the, the crew up here. Stupid. 
The crew What's of Montpelier, the people? their idea of a cut is to take a 10%. A smaller increase. A 10% increase and make it a 6% increase. Yep. Hey, Fitz, a local note. Who's our next state senator? Gee, I don't know. Dave what? Handy. <laughs> yeah. What's taking Good so luck long? with that. Well, I Frank, support I talk, that. Actually, I talked to Rep. Corey Perrin Mon Monday night at Collins Purley. Franklin County Republican Committee's got to meet. They'll presumably make three recommendations to the governor. I mean, the key is just getting someone before January. Duke, I'm going to ask you a question. I need an answer. You know, anyway. I like I like Phil Scott. Worked hard for him. Yeah. He's a guy that appointed this Sarah George, you know, in Chittenden County to be the state's attorney. Is that right? That was a, this uh, idiot down there who's promoting a safe house to come get your shots today, boys. Clean needles. You know, this. I, I am amazed at the way this country is going. I realize I'm conservative and kind of a pain in the rear end. I understand that. Mm. But this is horrible. We promote, come here and get a safe shop. Then they'll send you across the street so you can be cured. Mm. How dumb can we be? Mm. Mm. I, what the hell is the matter with us? I've got nothing to add to that. You're right. We're stupid. We are stupid. Now, we're going to get Stanton in the middle of that Red Sox lineup, and that's going to end you boys over in New York. Yeah, you're going to be happy paying this guy $30, $30 million a year as he Why as not? He we're paying other people 25 26 Fitzy, let me tell you right now about the Red Sox. Anybody that gets Stanton, that contract is a steal. He's, he will be underpaid grossly within three years. Now, yes, he will. To talk, the way things are going. We, you, you've got to have a starting point here. The number one hitting free agent this year is J.D. Martinez. His agent? Yeah, he's, he's a good one. Scott Burroughs. Scott Burroughs. friend, Scott Burroughs. All right, his opening line is? 210. 210 for seven ye right. years. Okay. Really? You won't go to the Red Sox. Thirty million a he, he year. That's Boston. a half million dollars more than Giancarlo Stanton. The only bad thing I can say about Stanton, and the Red Sox have grave concerns, and I agree, is his health. Yeah. He's a gr he's better than Bryce Harper if he's healthy. It's the health issue. Uh, the problem with the Red Sox is mega contracts. Is too, just, they just don't is, do much. They for don't me. have the farm system anymore because they depleted it by the great trade with Chris Hill, Jan Makata, Mike, the, what was the pitcher? Cape Capish or yeah, very, was, uh, but okay. So the guys they traded to Chicago and the other problem the Red Sox had, all these great prospects they had, they're playing for the Red Sox. Raphael Devers, Andrew Benintendi, uh, Bogarts, all these young kids who are now on the team. So they have very, yeah, the, Mookie, the, Jackie. The Marlins do not want a Dustin Pedroia contract. I said two weeks ago on the show, a fair trade would be Benintendi and the Red Sox number one pitching prospect, Jason Groom, who's only 19 years old, nobody knows about him, left-hand pitcher. Now, they are getting some offers, you know, from, mostly from the Giants and the Cardinals. Dodgers. Uh, Red Sox are going out to Aruba. Oh, they, they're, they're talking Jose Aruba from the uh, uh, White Sox. Yeah. Red Sox will get somebody good. But I'm telling this you right now, happen. this contract. I'll tell you, I like that other big kid from Miami, that B-O-H-R, whatever his name is. Uh, I can't, that kid can hit. Yeah. Oh, uh, Justin Bohr. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you straight up right now. If you think Giancarlo Stanton is underpaid at 20, or overpaid at 29.5, what do you think? Bryce Harper is going to get next year minimum thirty five million a year. I mean, you think That's somebody right. will yes, pay absolutely. him that? Absolutely, really, absolutely. Because number one, people aren't getting okay, a little freaked out Ma about Miami these contracts. Miami is expecting, and they will get some compensation. Yeah. But Stanton's got a, a an accurate market value at about thirty million. That yeah. that that's a fair price. Yeah. But I would trade Bryce Harper today as a Nationals fan. He's got one year left with us. It'll be getting 21 and a half this year. Yeah. I would trade him outright right now for Stanton for one who? year. You would trade who? Harper for uh, Giancarlo. I wouldn't take Harper for Stanton. Well, I, right. I, I think Harper is one of the very best, but Giancarlo, if healthy, might, might be the best player. The Reds, the, you take that extra 30 million now, that puts the Red Sox way over the exactly. the luxury yeah, tax. Exactly. It does. Don't in want in to the do perfect world, the Red care, Sox. David. They got money. The Red Sox would shed Pedroia 
in Ramirez, and that would more than make up Giancarlo's well, salary, but they, easier said they, than done. I he think, doesn't want those two guys. Of course no. not. No, see, what makes Benintendi so attractive to the Marlins is he only gets about $600,000. Derek Jeter is stripping this team down. If you think that they've had attendance issues in the past, mm. I can guarantee you they will strip the team down because D. Gordon is available and other good players on that team are available. Uh, yeah, they they are. will lose 110 games next year, the Marlins. Well, they forced Stanton into to uh, accepting a trade because they said if you if we can't trade you, then you can stay here and we'll strip the whole club exactly. and you'll be playing with absolutely Jose Gomendez from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Yeah. Now, <laughs> so what does Jeter just want to go the route of the Astros? Just yeah. strip because it down. Jeter's and... the face of the ownership, but my guess is he probably owns two three percent of the team. Hmm. Okay, where. They're going from about a hundred forty million dollar payroll down to ninety. I don't know how many teams pay under a hundred. Ninety. I mean, let's look at the Dodgers. Okay, their payroll this this year was two hundred forty million dollars, um, and the Red Sox were one ninety five. They were barely above the cap. I think it was one ninety, the luxury cap. Yeah. This year, twenty eighteen, will be one ninety seven. And the Red Sox are serious about staying on the luxury cap, and the Yankees are more serious about staying under the Because cap. it resets everything. The first year is 20%, next year is 30%, which you pay over the cap. David, has Beltram got a chance at that job? No. I don't know. Uh, I've heard Beltran is really a good guy in the clubhouse, and... I think that's over-exaggerated. I, uh, I wonder... I wonder what in the heck the Yankees are looking for. I figured they'd have had their manager by now. Yeah, me too. But that was my question for. Uh, there's, there was some talk today in the New York papers that, uh, that the Yankees might be taking too long, and that it might hurt them with the Shoney from Japan. Yep. But I don't think so. I think they're going to get Shoney. And who wants are, him? Are you serious? Oh, you think the Yankees are getting him? Oh, everything I've heard is he he want and uh, he's if he talks to Tanaka. I think the Giants are getting him. I heard Seattle Mariners, but the Cubs have offered. You can have the left field position when you're not pitching. So this guy will pitch, and the other four days he's going to be <laughs> playing left field. I know it. That's how great of an athlete. My guess is they'll give him one day off, then pitch day well, off, uh, three days in the outfield. But they say he's as good a pitcher. He's better. Than you, Darvish. How old is he, David? 23. He's only 23. Remember, remember, gentlemen, that's a different class of baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, no, uh, the Yankees, the Yankees aren't, aren't going to go. These big uh, free agent contracts, these $250, $200 million contracts, I don't think you're going to see very many of them. No. Because yeah, they're. I agree. Too. Now, I could see. A team offering a guy maybe three years at big money, but they don't want to be stuck with these guys. David, my good friend, Bryce Harper next year at age 26. I know the starting point will be 12 years minimum, $400 million. Who's going to pay it? The Yankees don't want them. Cubs probably. Cubs aren't going to pay that. I, I, someone will. Red Sox aren't going to pay The Red it. Sox aren't going to pay that. The Red Sox, the one thing the Red Sox have against them for Giancarlo Stanton, they're still paying for Pablo Sandoval. Yep. They still, they're paying $30 million for a two-inning pitcher and David Price. Are, are they still paying for Carl Crawford? No, yes. I think they, when they no, shipped I, him off to okay. the Dodgers. Thank, thank you for One year, maybe? Yeah. Guy. They've got uh, Hanley Ramirez, which is... Uh, Hey, they they paid seventy million dollars to that guy that's in the minor leagues. Oh, oh, right, the uh, the Ruzi Cuban, the, yeah, yeah, he the, signed for seventy five million dollars. The yeah. Cuban fellow. Yeah, I will bet my life. A night yeah. guarantee. Bryce Harper easily will be making thirty million dollars a year. Injury yeah. prone. He is they injury won't, prone. They won't pay it. And he's a jerk too. But how many people are going to pay? Who's, who's going to pay? Who's going to pay that? You forget Bryce Harper. Two seasons ago was MVP, and he was in line to get MVP no, again this year. But my question year. is, who? who their who, team. There's 30 teams. When out there. the Yankees are most of, in most of which are not about to pay 30 million a year to somebody. Well, 
Um, yeah. Mike Scherzer, we're paying $30 million. And I'm telling you right now, winning a Cy Young two years in a row, yeah. he's a steal for $30 million. Now, I will grant you, you and I are in agreement, never sign a pitcher to a long-term contract. You'll hold your breath. Now, when the I Nats, feel the same way about hit hitters. Steven Strasburg, we signed him at a bargain basement price seven years. You know, boys, most of these million. teams aren't even close to the Astros. Not no. even close to no. the Astros. The Astros Nighthawk said... He jabbed me when I said they had the best farm system. Well, they should have the best. They finished last so long, so many years. Yep. They are the best baseball team down the roster in the major leagues today. Man yep. for man for man. Yep. And I can say my team, the Nationals, the trade we made with the White Sox after we didn't get Chris Sale, we got Adam Eaton that got hurt for the year, three weeks into the year. We gave him our three top prospects. We have we don't have a number five starter, and forget even number five. When you start the season, you better have six starters because there's three things in life you Look can do. Look at the money you guys spent on that outfielder with the hair down to his waist. He's gone. His contract is up. Seven I years, know it is. 126. But, but, what a waste of money that guy was. And he injuries. Yep. Out of Terrible. Those, yep. The Houston Nationals. Down the line are the best baseball yeah. team but in America I'm, I'm telling today. you right now, if I had to take yeah, they any... they are today. I, that's what I'm talking about. I think the Red Sox are the best team going into I'll tell you what, if the Yankees had picked up Verlander instead of the Astros, we'd be talking about the Yankees World Series you right now. You have the Red Sox ahead of the Yankees? I do. As you did this year, that didn't work out. That so Verlander, well, I don't know why those guys didn't go after standing. Verlander. Why, why do you have the Red Sox ahead of the Yankees? Because I am projecting moves. There's no... Dealer Dave will make moves this winter. There's no question in my mind. And he will get oh, well. an Abreu. He'll get a Logan Morrison at first base. He will get somebody. He's 85 RBIs. Logan Morrison? How about yeah, uh, Husband? Signed by Tampa. Yeah, didn't Morrison get 38 home runs for the Rays yes. last year? Nobody knows about him because he plays on Tampa. 38 home runs right. and 85 RBIs. Right, yeah. it just shows you nobody gets on base for Tampa. See, uh, Eric Hosmer, to me, would be a good fit that for the Red Sox. That would be a Sox. great pick. Yep. Yep. And he's a good fielder, too. Yep. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know. But you boys, keep paying your taxes. We're going to open up a safe <laughs> needle hatchery in the Republic of Burlington. Hey, Fitzy, I'll tell Those you boys what. boys couldn't even make a decision on how to sell their TV business to him. I never saw such yeah. a fiasco in my life. Hey, Fitzy, can I ask you a question? Of course. One Friday night, uh, how about me, you, my Donna, and your Esther? Instead of going to the Elks Club to drink beer, what do you say we go down to Burlington and shoot up some heroin? Well, we, no, we got to go. They're not open after 5 o'clock. we got to go to a safe house. Oh, okay, okay. The, the, the state's attorney down there has got that all yeah. lined up. Yeah. And uh, she thinks that's a cute thing to do with the cute kids up at UVM. Yeah. And uh, so, they, you know, we're, we're coming good down there. Uh, they, they, they've sold their telecon, and after six months of battling who should get that, I never saw it. I, it's a jolt. Wait, those guys did, the, did they sell it today? today? <clears throat> to whom? Yeah, they, they sold it to KZZ or some outfit. I don't know who the hell for, it was. There was a deal. It was that wild meeting, what, mon Monday night yeah. until 2 a.m. Tuesday. Dude, there was a late... You're, you're a with, sensible businessman. Have two you of the ever seen such together. a fiasco in your life? No. Um, that was pretty wild. How much was it, 28 from the, from that group? Yeah, 28, 30 million. Yeah, because the like big bidder out of Toronto was 32. But I always say to someone, like, they wanted to keep it local. That's after Bob Kiss took $17 million out of the general fund <laughs> to keep it afloat. But I joke. always say to people, name me one thing that government does better than private enterprise. Nothing. Do not. Reagan said the perpetual movement is a government program. <laughs> so, th thank you, Fitzy. <laughs> un un unreal, unreal. I, I watch those guys down there in dismay. Yeah. Hey, I can't believe it. Hey, Fitz, when you do your hair one, make sure you tie it up real t tight and get that vein popping. No, no, no. you got to go to this new place and get proper instructions. Oh, okay. No, no. Well, you don't know okay. how to do this, and there's okay. a proper way of doing it. But let the taxpayers pay for that, then they'll send you across the street and try to cure you. Exactly. Thanks, In the meantime, Fitz, we'll, we'll legalize marijuana. That will help. Yeah. We've gone crazy, boys, in this country. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So. Go Red Sox. And by the way, 
Go Vikings. Go Vikings. I'm rooting for them. The Vikings yeah, are okay, good. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. See you, Pets. Now, Duke, when I do say the Red Sox, I, I By the way, whoop, oh. I, I am on projection. I, I expect Porcella to become an average pitcher. I, I expect David Price is going to kind of uh, reflect, I think he might be reflect good his 15, life 15 wins anyway. and maybe do an image makeover and become a 18-game winner with an ERA down around 3.2. I, I, Stephen Wright is back because you're number five guy. Yeah. So, but, they, but the Yankees, don't the Yankees strike you as an up-and-coming? I mean, Aaron, Aaron Judge, an up-and-coming team? Yeah, if we get a Shawnee. Well, I'll tell you, for our last show ever, we're getting a lot of calls here tonight. Good evening. You're on the Best Dance Sports Show in Franklin County. Hello. Hey, guys. How are we doing tonight? We're doing hey. pretty good. A lot of calls, a lot of um, men. Information going on here? Yep. How are you? A uh, couple of things there. Uh, Eli, uh, geez, I've always loved that guy, and I'm not a giant fan. The, the thing that kind of gets me is with him, and I don't mean to beat a dead horse here, is, you know, he's had no protection all year, no pass receivers. And, uh, you know, when Leonard's saying he's only throwing 15 yard passes, well, when you've got two seconds to throw, yep. Your pass receivers can't get any farther than no. 50. I thought Leonard beat up on him pretty bad. I don't know if it was his frustration with the Giants, but I think uh, Manning deserves a lot more respect than that. Also, he's one of the great guys in football all these years, never a bad word. And you've got all this trash in the NFL now, taking the knee, and uh, they're playing every week. You know, they should be the ones on the bench. It just seems like things are working backwards here. Yeah. Um, but Eli will probably end up in a better place. I mean, New York has become a zoo. Uh, you know, when Coughlin, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, when this trouble started is when Beckham had that game. He was fighting on the sidelines. Um, he was just roughhousing all day long. And Coughlin became the sacrificial lamb. Yeah. In my opinion, yeah. somebody had to go, and Beckham wasn't going. You know, that's well, last a, year. What was the Giants' record last year? Eleven and five. And that was still Coughlin's team last year. Yep. That you know what I mean. It was still his guys, but with a different coach. And this year, with your new coach, um, it, it showed what this guy was. I mean, you have no team. Yeah. Um, they made a mistake. Getting rid of Coughlin, the yep. wrong people went. Yep. But as far as um, Eli, I was looking at a thing on the internet and what at you know places he may go and you know like you said earlier, Jacksonville is a top spot. Then they have Denver. Yeah. Then they have Arizona. Then they have Cincinnati. Then Cleveland. Then um, rather ironic. Another spot for him is in Washington, you know, letting um, Kirk Cousins walk yep. and taking Eli there. And what would be really fun is to watch Eli beat up on the Giants two yep. games each year. I think Washington would be a very good spot because they're um, very competitive. And I think if Washington had the opportunity to replace Kirk Cousins, with a very serviceable quarterback, they would do it. So it's definitely worth keeping an eye on this situation. Cousins, Cousins and the Redskins have a very acrimonious relationship. They both hate each other. I expect Cousins to, to leave. This is his second year he's been uh, franchised. If the Redskins want to franchise him his third year, it's e next year, He's either going to be getting 34 or $36 really? million. Dollars. Wow. So we know that's not going to happen. So Cousins probably will leave. But, you know, uh, uh, Eli's got a half dozen places. That yeah, but he won't go to the – the Giants won't trade him to the Redskins. No. Because the Giants still have him under contract. Right, exactly. Well, and, and he they will be released, cut right, and become a free agent? No, they, they, they will expect a first-round draft pick for him. For a yeah. team like Denver, that's still a good team with no quarterbacks, that that would be the turning point for that team. Jacksonville, we know, has got a pretty good defense this year. Great running back in Leonard Fournette. Uh, 
it would be a perfect fit for the him. The Bortles has just hung around there exactly, too long. Exactly, exactly. And one thing, too, Jacksonville isn't too far from his hometown of New Orleans. I don't think he would mind playing down south. So Eli will be fine wherever he ends up. But on the Internet all day yesterday, there was, other than Leonard Parent, there was not one bad word or one good word to say about the giant organization, right. about Eli has earned the respect. Uh, he, you know, he should get whatever Eli wants. Um, well, they could have handled it differently. They, they yeah, You look around the league right now, what's going on. I mean, to get somebody as good as Eli in the league, that you know, I, I think there, there should have been a lot more respect. And if you're going to trade him, trade him at the end of the season. Yeah. You know, he is owed that job. And I read um, Geno Smith, they call him Geno, the turnover machine, yeah. Smith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the thing, too, and I don't think David and I as Giant fans would be that upset if they said we're going to Davis Webb. There's Just like, as I said earlier on the show, when do the Rams go to Jared Goff with five games left to go in the season? You know, Go- about this time last exactly. year. Exactly. And that's enough time. You, to- you give them a taste. Yeah. You know, you let them study up for yep. about eight weeks, and you let them get their feet wet, you yeah. know? Yeah, because uh, with a third or fourth overall pick come April, um, you know, if Webb is good enough to play, if they deem him good enough to play, don't waste the pick. Trade down. If they st- still think Eli's got it, don't waste the pick. Trade down. So, but Geno Smith, again, we know who Geno is. Well, I'll tell you what, if Reese wasted that, I suspect that Webb's not really that good. And uh, he did take Jared, that's the, the irony of this. Jared Goff, who was the number one pick in the draft last year, uh, and Carson Wentz went number two. Once Jared Goff graduated from Cal, it was Davis Webb that took over. They say Webb has got a very strong arm, very accurate. They said the downside of Webb is his decision-making process. Well, that's, for a quarterback, Experience. that's uh, bad decision-making is as much of a, oh, pro- I, a problem as having a bad arm. Exactly. I agree. Yeah, he, and Webb started with Texas Tech, transferred over to Cal. But go ahead. Uh, you, they, uh, a, a smart GM could rebuild the Giants very quickly. And this, this mush-mush NFL plus, don't forget the Giants will be getting the cream puff of cream puff schedules next year. Mm-hmm. Yep. Be, they'll be getting a fifth-place schedule. And David, but, you... but the sad thing about the Giants is they spent all their money on this defense. This defense was supposed to be a bone-crushing defense. And... Um, I think half of the reason the offense is so bad is because they're behind early every game, it seems. And, you know, when you're playing catch-up football, you're playing a a different game. Yeah. Now, the defense was one of the very top last year. We all had expectations being as good, if not better, this year. Now, Eli Apple, our number one pick out of Ohio State cornerback, it was reported this week when the Giants had a sit-down meeting, let's get it all on the table, we're going to show film, we're going to call people out. They, uh, twice that they pointed out Eli Apple for this poor, if any effort at all, they said twice he threatened to get up and leave. Uh, it's just what an immature player he is. Janoris Jenkins last year, okay, got a ton of money, used to play with the Rams, all pro last year, one of the very top corners. He went on the IR today, but he's been horrible this year. Of course, he got suspended for a game about a, a for insubordination, right? Insubordination. So I'm not concerned. Defense healthy all there next year, but just to Jerry Grease to me is the biggest problem. The left tackle, best left tackle on free agent market was 35 year old uh, uh, Andrew Whitworth. Giants could have had him. Reese said, nah, we don't want an old player like that. We're going to stick with Flowers. So Whitworth went with the second choice, the Los Angeles Rams, with 5-11 and 11 team. The reason for the rebound on the offense, and Todd it's... Gurley having a great year, was that 35-year-old veteran at left tackle giving Goff protection, giving Curley a lane to run in. And he'll probably have one more good year, just enough to get Goff 
into position where he's confident enough. Well, the other good thing about Eli is that on that $100 million contract he signed, the Giants have paid him $67 million of the guaranteed money. Mm -hmm. He's only $10 million on the salary for the next two okay. years. Okay. So $10 million bucks on a quarterback is not too much. It leaves you some money to put on other guys. Yeah. Now, caller, just to show you the complexity of the NFL, last year, if we were talking, Case Keenum in the Minnesota Vikings and Jared Goff in the Los Angeles Rams being <clears throat> two of the top teams in the NFL this year, you would laugh at me. But that's how quickly it turns. Cowboys won the division last year. Giants w with a wild card with a very good 11-5 record. They have both have had a bad year. You can yeah. turn it around in one year. And I like the Rams. Golf. Yeah, I read this little piece um, with the Cowboys. Uh, the players are quitting on the coach because they don't feel he's making the right adjustments. Well, hey, listen, guys, you are the ones on the field playing. Perhaps you ought to make the adjustments and start playing football. Mm -hmm. You know, don't blame the coach. Yeah. You take it out in the field instead of 80%, try giving 100%. Yeah. You know, I never like thought. Like I say, the NFL has turned, you've got the tail wagging the dog. It's really, really, uh, you know, the respect is not there. Yeah. And I agree. And David, you say it every week. You can see it on the field. The play is not as good today no. as it was five I don't years think, ago. Uh, I don't think the Dallas coach is that good. It's attitude. Yeah. There's one team, there's one team caller that you don't have to worry about. There's one team that they don't have these issues. They don't have excessive celebration penalties. Nope. <laughs> they, they could lose their, their top three players, take the three of us. They're still going to be 12 and four, and that's New England Patriots. Yeah. Funny you mentioned celebrations, Gronk after and you know, that's two why they're winners. TV passes kind of lined, you know, did a little his, his classic, you know, yeah. thing. But after the game, he was asked about it, and so. I guess he quickly got the he got feeling that Belichick wasn't happy. He was uncomfortable. He, yep. It was a weird post-game interview when he was asked yep. about it. He said, I, I don't want to go. Belichick there. will take care of it. Yeah. They, uh, the, the Patriots play football. They wouldn't have this issue with the Giants because, you know what, Belichick would have got some linemen. And, and the other thing that the Belichick can do, if he doesn't have a guy that's any good, he trains the guys they have to be good. Yep. I mean, look at LeGarrette Blount, the classic example. His only good years is with New England. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. He's on Philadelphia this year, and Philadelphia is, what, 10-1? and one? Uh he hasn't done much. He hasn't done much. And they, in fact, the Eagles had to trade for Miami's number one runner, uh, that mm -hmm. JLI. So, caller, before you go, uh, John Carlos Stanton, I believe the Red Sox are making an effort for him. But one thing I didn't say or none of us said on the panel, in order to trade for him, he has to relinquish his buyout after three years. Because, you know, for example, the Red Sox don't want to give up Ben Attendee and Jason Groom. And, and pay out $90 million. He has to give something up in order to go to a contender. Why? Um, we don't know anything about it. Yeah, you know, I'm not really that. nuts over that guy. Either I'm, I'm not I nuts don't over the trade. Trade. Dandy. I don't want to trade Ben Dandy. What's he, 23? This groom is a young, 19. promising pitcher. Let's yeah. go with what we have. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to pick up like a Abreu. Abreu's good for 30 home runs a year, and he. Got, he has a good high average with the White Sox, but, um, you know, I really don't want to trade away anything yeah. for Stanton. Yeah. I, you know, I'm just kind of hoping um, Chris Sale is Chris Sale. I'm hoping um, Price comes back, and uh, Purcello seems to be every other year he pitches well, and this is the year he will pitch well. And, you know, I'm just hoping the pieces will come together. You know, all we got to do is get into a wild card spot. And who knows what can yeah. happen from I hope there. Chris Sale has a lot better game than his first yeah. game postseason. And, and don't forget Stephen Wright. And the other thing, too, the Red Sox obviously do not need an outfielder. They're set for the next eight years in the outfield. If they don't uh, trade, yeah. But if they don't like trade, I said, Logan Morrison, who nobody knows, 
38 home runs for the Rays last oh. year. They could get him on the cheap, maybe three years at $50 million. Is he a free agent? He's a free agent. Now, I remember Logan Morrison very well from like nine years ago when he came up with the Marlins. He was a can't-miss prospect. Just didn't work out for him. But he picked a good time to have a good year. As the caller said, Abreu's available. Eric Hosmer is available. There are some better-than-average first basemen available to them. So, But what a dead guy year. like Hosmer, too, as I mentioned yeah. before. He, uh, he's still very young. And, you know, it's very athletic, four gold gloves. And, uh, you know, he would almost be a kind of a sure bet that you do. I don't mind spending some money if you get your money's worth. Yeah. It's, uh, we've been caught up in paying people for what they used to do. Yeah. And that's what kind of burnt the Red Sox over the years. It's a little refreshing signing somebody in their um Twenties instead of the thirties. So. Isn't it funny though? We'll, November we'll twenty. See how it turns out. November twenty ninth. The only nameable person to sign is Doug th- Fister. Doug Fister for four four and a half million dollars. Nobody is signing this year, and I think next week is the uh, general managers meeting. So maybe some. Well, I guess they're all waiting. For... Yeah, it's supposedly a very lean year yeah. on free agents. So, yeah. um, well, you know, it's kind of set. To, Hang on to your money this year and, um, you know, maybe spend next year. I think there's a new reality in baseball. At any rate, we'll see what goes on. Um, I'll let you guys go and great show, guys, and have a nice cruise, Nighthawk. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. No, there's a new reality, and I think paying guys in their 30s $30 million a year it's just not going to happen. Yeah. And the Nationals just finally getting out of that Jason Worth contract. Injured a lot. Uh, better than average player, but he, he didn't warrant that money. In the special case with Washington, they were coming off back-to-back 100 loss years. They had to they, overpay. They couldn't get anybody. They needed a leader in the clubhouse. And he was the leader of that clubhouse. Very well respected. But uh, even he missed half the year this year. Uh, so he, he's he's gone. He's gone. So next will somebody, year, will somebody grab him for a low, lower, obviously they, way lower money? I would maybe think he's worth three million dollars. He might uh, be a fourth outfielder for a, a team with three young outfielders. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, in in the Nats will have Adam Eaton in left field next year. I mean, the Nationals next year. I mean. They're, they won the division by 20 games. So there's no reason not to think they'll win well, by 15. But boy, their postseason, I mean, just Terrible. every from day one, hey, great, this team's going to win the division. What about, well, I will probably, are they going to blow it again postseason? See, I think Talk when Dusty Baker got them. fired, I don't think that was their general manager, Mike Rizzo. Yeah. I think that was the Lerner family. Yeah. Mike Lerner or uh, Mike Rizzo came out and said, Winning a lot of games and divisional divisional titles don't mean anything anymore, huh. and they don't. It, it, it's a good season, yeah. but you, you, you got to win. Hey, you had three playoff teams can their managers. Yeah, Red Sox, of course, okay. being oh. one of them. Okay, Red right. Sox, Yankees, and oh, Washington. Very interesting. Yeah, um, well, it depends. I'll on tell you another thing too, David. I heard is they said the X and O's in baseball are not as important. Is keeping your clubhouse happy. That's, you, you, you need one of those 21st century. Joe Madden is the king of that. Right. I love you, Dave, kind of guy. Yeah. Come to my office, cry on my shoulder. They said that, that's the most important thing. And I also heard, I don't know if I mentioned on the show, and it was a former Houston, might have been Art Howell or somebody from the past, went into a job interview and said to the general manager, well, here's my philosophy for this team. General manager cut him off and said, we don't want to hear your philosophy. This is our philosophy. I want to see if you can match our philosophy. So, It's a, it's a different animal, these new athletes. And, but uh, the uh, whole thing with the Giants, the NFL, it's all so discouraging. Well, it's David, all so awful Do you know what's so bad? And I've been saying they haven't been showing the anthem for the game. Thursday night, last Thursday, Thanksgiving night, after eating two big Thanksgiving meals, you know, I watched the Giant game. There's a military man in full dress singing a great rendition of our national anthem. 
who's in the background, there's only one giant that takes the knee. Number Oliver 54, Vernon. Olivier and Vernon. He's actually a very good player, and he he's actually plays hard all the yeah. time. And, you know, wrong. And, and, David, you're the history major, and I'm going to shut up and let you talk about this. The most disgusting thing of the whole NFL season was that thug Marshawn Lynch, when the Patriots mm -hmm. played Stood up for the Oakland, Mexican national anthem. Sat during the American anthem. And then the Mexican anthem played and stood up. Now, David, I'm going to let you, as the UVM class of 78 history major, correct me if I'm wrong, there's not a more corrupt nation in the Western Hemisphere than Mexico. And Oh, I don't know about that, but yeah, they've had their first Venezuela, yeah, yeah, But let me just say, they're up there. Okay, for an uneducated idiot like Marshawn Lynch, okay, doing what he did was... And I'm going to guarantee you, too, a lot of guarantees tonight, the NFL owners know exactly what's going on with these people like myself, that Ram caller. He said he's been a lifelong Ram fan. He says he hasn't watched one Ram game this year and won't. It's a bad year to not watch the game. But there will be at minimum, at minimum, if you don't want to stand for the anthem, then you stay in the locker room, which still is not respectful. But you, I can guarantee you, next year you will not see a knee. So what, that issue seems to have faded. Do the media just kind of get tired of that issue, or are fewer players protesting? Fewer players not, are doing not it. not televising it anymore or they're, something? Right. They're not showing it, although for whatever reason, the Thanksgiving night, they did show it. Yeah. Though they are saying that the NFL next year will have a rule Nobody comes out before the national anthem. No, is that right? So now, just, the NBA avoid the instituted a rule this summer. No knees. You we take gotta, a knee, you're gone. Go. We have a call. Wow, four. We'll get record. Big night tonight. Good evening. You're on the best damn sports so show in Franklin County. Hello. Weeks. How you doing tonight, guys? Hi, David. Hey, David. Hey, uh, I forgot to tell you something. I've known this for a long time, but I have a relative that is a big-time photographer for uh, the Denver Broncos. Down really? in uh, Baltimore, and uh, you got to see some of the equipment he has. He has more money in equipment than I got in my truck. Yeah. Did I just hear Baltimore, Denver yeah. Broncos? De Den Denver or Baltimore, David? Is he yeah, but, uh, yeah, he lives in Atlanta, but uh, he does the Atlanta, you know, uh, football games down there. Okay. Yep. Now, David, just before you get going here, I'm, I will call you tonight at home. <laughs> yeah, okay. But if you ever want to see the pictures that he takes, uh, you can go on Able Images, and uh, you see some of the pictures of football players, basketball games, the NCAA men's basketball, NCAA football. So again, David, who who does he work? Who does he work for? The team or for a, a paper or? A uh, he works for himself. He's a private business. Huh. So a free a freelance photographer. Yeah. He, huh. he's, he's got a uh, lens, uh, telescopic lens that looks like it's longer than my arm. Huh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I just wanted to call, call in. I forgot to tell you that, uh, Rick, that, that that's my one of my relatives. So okay. if you ever went on that. I'll, I'll check that out. So, Okay, I'll give you a buzz tonight. <laughs> yeah, okay, take Thank it you. easy. Thanks, Dave. Bye-bye. Of course, my most famous relative, of course, the late great Fred Gwynn. The Monsters. Star of the Monsters and Car 54. Oh, when he was a kid, Fred. he had serious, serious leg issues. God, I wish I had that photo. Uh, you showed it to me. Did I show that to you? It's a great photo. Uh, 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 the Monster. What was his no, name this is when he was on Car 54 right, with Joey Tootie. With Tootie. This is a Car 54. Joey, Joey Lewis. Are you? Joey Lewis. That, that's not quite right. Joey Ross. How about Joey Ross, maybe? Joey, no, Joey. Joey Lewis? That doesn't sound right. Car 54, uh, where are you? In any case, Tootie on the show. But it was a pig, just a black and white fun. In the, I was in the hospital with my osteomyelitis leg for 30, for a month. Now moving for a month. And I'm sure my mother got the word to him. Fred was my mother's first cousin. My mother would see him once in a while. Yeah. But it was a great black and white photo. With tall Fred saying, or I guess Tootie saying to Fred, looking up, Tootie's like about 5'5", five, five, Fred's about 6'6". Six, six. I hear Dick, sorry, sorry folks, to jettison that name on you. <laughs> I hear Dick Copperthwaite's lying down on the job, to which cousin Fred responds, oh, no, Tootie, he comes from good stock. 
He'll be up and around in no time. Oh, wow. Not exactly no time, but I wish I yeah. So I did show you that. Yeah, I used, in the Monsters, I used to watch the show uh, starring Yvonne DeCarlo. Yvonne DeCarlo. And, of course, Eddie with his with the, with the great hair, with his kind yeah. of V hairline there, um, the kid. And the guy, the grandpa, oh, Lewis. Was was Al Lewis. Al Lewis. Lewis. That's how, right. Yeah. That's, that's and the their grandpa. daughter was a delectable. Who also was in Car 54. Oh, yeah. The partner was Tootie. Was Joe, Joey Ross was the... His cop partner. It's not but Ross, but it's wasn't. Joey something. No, it's Joey, and Joey Ross, I think. Anyway. Too so bad I should have brought Al Lewis was in both both series. Yes. Yeah. I think he ended up running for like president, governor of New or York, mayor of New York, York some, or something. something. Yeah. yeah. Something. So now, anyway. Duke, I want to talk about a player that just doesn't get talked about all that much. Tom Brady. Okay. He said, boy, Brady, I'm a little concerned about Brady. He took some pretty good hits from he, Miami. He now didn't practice today. I'm watching the Boston, the Comcast show last yeah. night, which is a good show. Yeah. And the MVP I mentioned earlier, it's either going to be the second-year player, <clears throat> Carson Wentz, that looks like a 1950s yeah. style, just a man's yeah. man quarterback, yeah. or Tom Brady. But, and they're saying Brady statistically is having a second, third best year of his career. Yeah. Okay, do you remember when they lost two games early this year? And they're start oh. uh, like September, oh, Brady's starting to lose well, it. Well, what about that. a couple of years? They got off to a bad start maybe three years ago, and Brady yeah. was Brady so was his They've lost two games. They'll probably lose one, 13 and three year. But they're saying, and I kind of agree, Brady might be the MVP, but the writers might have Brady fatigue. So yeah. if it's real close between Wentz and Brady, right. they might say, let's give it he to a new to person. Say, I'd say Brady could care. Brady wants I don't think Super Brady Bowl. I don't think he doesn't care. Brady could, no. could care yeah. less. But, know. Uh, and I know probably people are tired here about the Patriots. But, he took, but I'm telling you, every year, David, I'm like you. I, I'm just in awe of that I, organization. Let me mention, speaking of the Pats, I like Shaughnessy's column in the Globe today. And I happen to, be, I happen to hear Belichick's answer. You know, what he can it? be with reporters. And he, I was like, come on, Bill, give me a... Give me a He's break. Horrible. In the middle of his press conference, it was Karen Garigian of the Herald. Might be mispronouncing her name. Veteran reporter, solid. Shaughnessy says she's at Pats every day. Her question, which hardly seemed unreasonable to me, after Brady gets some real hits, they're up to the game safely in hand with like five minutes left, and Brady comes back out, finishes the game. So the, the totally understandable common sense question was, and she didn't put it, she put it real kind of straight. Coach, you think, you know, what, why is Brady going out? Uh, maybe time to put in the backup and Belichick just respond. I mean, you want the exact yeah. response? Yeah. Just as if she doesn't know what she's talking about here. I mean, it was a totally reasonable question. Sorry, let me just find his, uh, the jump headline is Belichick's boorish response is wrong answer. Okay, where are we? Okay, uh, let me just try to get the question. So, so say, hey, maybe Brian Hoyer coming in, coach. What on the on the kneel downs? Belichick sneered. What difference does it make? Garrigan stood her ground and came back with, "What what about before that? This is when Bill delivered the whopper, a mean spirited remark that he knows is not true. It's easy for you to sit there and say the game's out of hand," he stated. If you watch games in the NFL, a lot can change in a hurry. The only time I think the game is in hand is when they're not going to have enough possessions to get the number of points that they need. Fair comment. And that's exactly the position the Pats were in. Miami, you know, was not going to win this game. Sorry, we just see that one totally differently. And Shaughnessy dug up a great stat. You ready yeah. for this stat? I love, I love this stat. i got to go back to the, uh, the cut line. Shaughnessy or somebody... Uh, did some dig. This is a cut line under Belichick's picture. Bill Belichick said Sunday's game had, had not been settled, but NFL teams down by 18 or more points with less than five minutes left are ready for the stat. How about 0 oh, oh 988 since uh, <laughs> 99? Yeah. Oh, 09. So again, he's just being, yeah, being right. he can, and Duke, can be Duke, that's Belichick. a good point. I, I see games like, let's, Eli's but been why? our Brady topic tonight. took some hit sack e Eli game. has been. The Giants have been knocked out of games early this year. To me, that was the time, third quarter, you put Davis Webb in. We didn't have to wait till the end. And even right. the good quarterbacks, and I don't know, David, if they like padding their stats, but I've always been a true believer. When the game's well in hand, you pull them out. It's a 16-week schedule, but they don't. Do that. And especially since, you know, Miami, I guess, has a reputation for being kind of a mm. cheap shot. Right. I mean, he took some 
He took some real hits that game. Yep. yep. So boy, you just better better hope, Patch. He doesn't get injured. All you need is for Brady to get injured in the last minute of a game, and you know he's so do- just surly. And but David, what if Bill Belichick was a three and thirteen team? Do you he think would that, be around? You think that would play out? He it, no. oh, sure, and Patriots fans. Oh yeah, I mean you know he can do. Obviously, he can do no right. For the record, I, Sean, Sean is very fair. He, he gets on Belichick's case big, big time. This is how he starts his column. And I'm sure he got a ton of grief about this. Before you run to your keyboard and rip off a vicious anonymous comment, email, tweet, let me start with a disclaimer and own up to the obvious. I like Bill Belichick and believe he's the best coach, strategist, thinker we've had since Red Arback, who Sean has loved, understandably, maybe ever. I wish I knew him better. And I've always thought he'd be a fascinating guy to ride shotgun with on a drive to Florida. Belichick knows 100 million times more football than I know. Now that we have that out of the way, then he yeah. gets into his criticism. Yeah. So, Duke, a little bit of time left, about eight minutes. Uh, college basketball. The UVM Catamounts, 5-1. and one. They're playing in Richmond against the Spiders as we speak. Oh, is that right as we speak? This week we received a top 25 vote. Oh, is that right? Guess who it was that. from. Guess who the vote was from? Yes. You know him. You like his writing. Sean, Sean Shaughnessy? Nope. Oh, Bob Ryan? Nope. A, gl- a Boston wrote guy? Wrote a book about Red Auerbach. Wrote a book about golf. Fein, fein, oh, Feinstein. John Feinstein there? gave the catamounts. Guess who, guess who I just gave one oh. of his books to? And uh, so I, oh, is that right? I, I did all the how, counting. How, how'd, you know, how'd you know that? I just heard on TV. It was in the paper, too. It was. The Catamounts right now are 42nd in the country. Really? Really? We lost to Kentucky, I believe, is ranked 7th in the country right now. Sure, they're still We lost by four measly points. With with two chances to tie it late on three point shots. Um, We have a very good basketball team, and I wish you brought your tweet machine. I I hid myself. I think I mentioned, I was thinking, I think fairly seriously, going to the. Vermont UVM uh, Maine Fort Kent game last week didn't didn't make it. My track record continues to be what was atrocious. the score? We we crushed uh, them, right? 30, 40 90 points. To 50. But what was weird? It was a weird. Well, it just speaks to how hard it is for UVM to get a home game against anybody. Yes, this team's not even like classified or something. They're that, uh, that game NAIA AI. But that game does count as a regular win. I, I, I think like so. I even read that yeah. there was some question about and that. I'll tell you, these I UVM guess. basketball games, are pr- if they're not sold out, they're pretty darn close as hell. Yeah. Just wait in a few years when that new arena is going to be built. Yeah. If you get a season ticket or like become a victory club member, you ain't getting in That's there. That's pathetic. If you want to go, it's pathetic. I haven't been to a basketball game. But, no, they're a very, very disciplined, very good team. Yeah. You know, Excellent And team. I have to believe another good season from this team, which Beck, I Becker, fully expect. I think Becker, he was big. offered a big-time job, and I don't remember the team that offered the yeah, job somebody, this year. Somebody but I think out. even the higher echelon teams will go after him. And well, well, he, uh, if you go on the UVM big. website, his – Job is sponsored by Robert Chaffee. What do you mean sponsored by? It must be their um, Robert. Old friend Robert has endowed has endowed Becker's job. Really? Meaning really? he's paying a salary. He must, he I don't paid. know how, but if you go on the UVM basketball website, like, I'm guessing. Like I think the hockey coach Kevin Snedden gets about two and a quarter a right. year. Becker's probably getting three hundred. Yeah, he he's got to be, and uh, they're going to have to really pay him to keep him. Yeah, that's in, that's interesting. Is Rob still on the on the board of trustees? I think he he's chair, done now. Yeah, he done. was. Of course, Frank was on also. I didn't, Frank's still on? I think Robert's uh, wife's got some oh, yeah. substantial. Uh, and on the other, I think that's why they uh, oh, they yeah. set up uh, the little league. Oh yeah, uh, in his dad's name. Okay. In the other side of the coin, the hockey team just dreadful. Four nine and one. Didn't they? Uh, did, one five and one. They beat Dartmouth in overtime the other last, day. Last last place two, in, in hockey East, right? Yeah, yeah. They're they're. It's just horrible. Would you think, Sned? I mean, how much? There's no pressure in Burlington. Now, last Tuesday night. I've never done this in the 30-plus years I've been there. Yeah. 
Sorry, I, like I told you, tennis guy. I, I brought my early. Yeah. Brought my oh, what grandson a Jackson. Terrible game, right? It was three nothing after the second wow. period. I said to myself, I said, self, if these guys aren't going to put a good effort in, You're, why should I so even you stay? You left early. I huh? Left after the second period. Never have done that. It, they, three, uh, it was three nothing after two. Not three nothing after one. After well, I thought it was three nothing after been, one. But it was, it was three nothing after two. Still after two. And, and the final score was four to one. Four one. But it's just wow. there. Uh, Snedden doesn't play a very fun brand of hockey. David, you're a hundred. I got a buddy down there, and he says even when they win, it's just not fun it's hockey. It's grinded to watch. out. You're Kevin Snedden. I mean, obviously he's got a good job and stuff. I guess you don't walk away from a good job. Wouldn't you think in his case, he might think, hey, this is a great place and stuff. But boy, maybe it's time for me to. Oh, David. I guess he probably doesn't think that way. Well, you know, I'm putting. Well, he probably thinks he's doing a great job. Yeah, you David. think? You think? <laughs> they always do. Yeah. And the line is, it's hard to recruit, and I kind of drink that Kool-Aid a little bit. Yeah, by there's probably that, something to that. Uh, in that barn. But me thinks that with the new arena or the refurbishment, they're starting in, in a year and a half. Um, I'm not sure how long it'll take. Uh, but I would think that would be the good time to bring in a new person. Yeah. Um, it's just... It, but it's there's just, no pressure. I mean, you know, yeah. nobody you gets know, on uh, Hawk, much. You know, this huh? hat, I was just looking at it. You know when I get this hat? I got this hat back in 1981. Really? When I went with Leonard and my dad and Bob Smith. Oh. I was at. I went to that game with you. And that's when I bought. I bought a whole bunch of David, giant paraphernalia. Yeah. This hat wasn't even made you, in China. It was you made in the Dominican Republic. It looks like it's in Min. David, I can tell you, I, I went. Haven't. I was with you at that game with a lot of us. We went down on JetBlue for nineteen dollars. For nineteen dollars. JetBlue, and then remember what Leonard had us take a cab or something. We went to Forty Second Street back before it got cleaned up. Really. And I remember some some guy with Times Square area. Times Square, because there what restaurant was it? Mama Leone's or something. It was Leonard a was. it was a brunch, and the brunch cost more than the airplane ticket. But Sarah. So yeah. While well, the uh, or. Because I, I did that trip about three, four times. No, we went, our game got, we had a one o'clock game. But we didn't have, uh, uh, we didn't have, our flight home was at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. So we went to Times Square. Some guy tried to sell me some dope. Really? When I was so nervous the whole time. Of course, I'm carrying this bag of giant stuff. I look like a tourist, <laughs> which I was. As soon as we got off the plane, into Burlington, I threw up right on a tarmac. Really, really. <laughs> I never and I never. Now, David, speaking of hats, brand new cap just got through lids off uh, the internet. This is a good looking hat. However, I got a Celtic hat, like brown tweed, very fancy, but I look like a 19 year old rapper. It's got a flat lid, yeah, and it doesn't look like this old fashioned type hat. And my wife says I look goofy in it, but I am going to wear it next time I'm on the show. So, Duke, before we didn't even I talk about Celtics. They're doing great. It was great. Great game the other night. We lost against Detroit yeah, one minute. So. Uh, Andre Detroit's Drummond. That's a good team. Wow, what a 26 game. 26 points, 22 rebounds. Center is an afterthought in the NBA, but this guy is yeah, a classic center. And Bradley looked good, but I love Celtics. And lastly, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, Marvin Bagley. The third. Is the third. Is he not the best-looking prospect oh, you've seen in the last 10 years? Yeah. Um, I'm not going to claim that he's spending probably a million hours on academic work having seen him. He's not. Interviewed after the Duke. Right. The Dukies last two come from behind wins. But, yeah, he's very good. Dukies are playing as we, they're starting against Indiana, ACC Big Ten Challenge yeah. right now. Yeah. So next week, don't forget Charlie Rose. Garrison Keeler, Matt Lauer, your new host on the Best Damn Sports Charlie, Show. Charlie Rose is a dookie, of course. Oh, okay. So that is it. That doesn't surprise me. Till next week, everyone. For Dave, the Duke, Miss Joanne, I'm the Nighthawk. And as always, remember, folks, you do not need to be a great athlete to be a good sport. Ciao for now. Mm -hmm.